We're now joined in studio by the head coach of the Martinsburg baseball team, Aaron Byler, his assistants, Kurt Zarnecki and Bo Bartley. And uh, shout out to Kurt Zarnecki because I didn't know this. I, f- I feel bad that I didn't know it, but it's hard to know the numbers officially when you're not here that long. But 100 wins on Saturday, Coach Byler, you eclipsed that. Uh, it's, a, it's a big mark for the program over the last five years since you've taken over. Yeah, it's it's good for the program. It shows that uh, we've been successful and we've been doing the right things. But kind of the reason why I wanted to bring Kurt and Bo along today is because we don't do what we've done uh, without them. And uh, you guys talk to me all the time, and you know I think they deserve just as much as the accolades as I do. Um, and I know they don't care about it, just like I don't care about it. And we just want to, you know, do, always do what's best for the program. But um, I'm glad to have them here with me today. So what can you guys say about? coach Byler and what he's been able to do for the program and just what what you guys have brought as well uh since you know five years ago uh should we start from like the beginning or yeah why not I mean the previous coaching staff when uh Bo and I found out that he was resigning me and him both kind of connected first before we even met Aaron and we were like hey we can we could turn this program around and we kind of had an agreement in place and then uh, Aaron just kind of came out of nowhere and we were like, who is this guy? You know, Potomac, uh, he was teaching at Potomac, so we didn't really know much about him. And, uh, you know, that first year was a lot of learning, but it was a, it was a lot of fun as yeah. well. And I think we did find a little bit about where, how kind of Byler made his move down here last year during the uh, hitting facility renaming and, and kind of how that brought you down here. Uh, but, but Bo, what, what, uh, what's your side of the story on this? On, on, the, on the program, I think we brought it. He brought, um, you know, respect to the kids, and you know, the kids respect him. You know, you you teach a kid how to play the game. They come to high school to play. You build a reputation and a, a relationship with the players, and they're gonna play better for you. How much has the relationship amongst you three and the rest of the uh, staff really grown over the years? I mean, uh, for us, we were kind of merged or meshed together um i i remember initially i turned him down i told him no i'm not going to coach with him and uh you know we had a mutual friend with brett and i remember brett pulled me aside and he said kurt uh, you need to do this trust me it will work out and so uh, you know brett was right and so i don't know if i'd be sitting here if he didn't you know come and find me at the high school and say you know give this guy a chance and you know, just to piggyback what Bo said is, you know, we care about our kids too. We want them to win, but we want that relationship. And so I think we do a good job, the three of us, showing that we care about every single guy on that roster. I, I you know, I reached out to Bo and actually had him come. Uh, he probably tell the story pretty good. I actually had him come to my classroom at Potomac Inter- Intermediate and interviewed him. And, and uh, you know, I'm grateful to have them both. And, uh, you know, you sent me the records of the team. Obviously, I wasn't here to know it. Uh, but uh, that first year, you guys had kind of immediate success. Yeah, I think, as my dad says, we were uh, my talking to my dad about that first season. He says that I don't realize how blessed that I was. Uh, and we were to have success that year because being able to go to the state tournament that year, I think kind of put, you know, you know this town that everybody wants to win, and, and if we didn't win right away, you know, we might have had a little bit more problem. So being able to be blessed to have that success in year one, and I think it's it's helped everything uh, as a program. So where do you want the program to go from here? You've had some success. Like you said, you made the state tournament. Uh, you've obviously had winning seasons every year, over 20 wins. How do you take this momentum and what you've built so far in Martinsburg and get to the next step and get uh, even further with the program each year? Well, I, th- I think you just compete every day. You know, we talk about one day at a time and, and getting better, and I think you always have to have, you know, everyday goals, and then you have to have big goals. And, and we by accomplishing your everyday goals, you can, you know, hopefully accomplish your, your big goals. Um, so we just want to keep getting better every single day. You know, I think – you know, these guys will tell you that the approach, you know, never changes. We try not to get too high, not to get too low. We have a whiteboard in our clubhouse that has goals on it, has things that we want to do, and those things don't change no matter what. Whether, you know, when we 
dropped two games in a row. It wasn't like the goals went away. It wasn't like we stopped doing projects at the field. It wasn't like we stopped practicing, you know what I mean? So just compete every day and hopefully, I mean, the ultimate goal is win a state championship, right? Since you just mentioned the field before we go talking about the uh, team, just what's some of the feedback about what you guys have uh, heard from how the field is this year from other teams or people around the community? All right, I, how about we direct that question to Curtin Bow? I think they hear as much of it as I do. Um, just listen to players and, and coaches in the other dugout when I'm standing on first coaching. Uh, they just talk about, wow, you know, they got turf fields, they got jumbotron screens, and man, why can't we have this? This is awesome to play here, stuff like that. I think perception-wise, you kind of walk into the stadium, it kind of has that minor league baseball feel to it. And, uh, you know, the things that he's done over the years has just been impressive and, you know, something that, you know, we could have never dreamed would ever happen at P.O. Faulkner Field. And, and I don't like the word he. I, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of people that had involvement other than me. And, I mean, Bo's been out there, you know, blood, sweat, and tears building things for us. And Shout Kurt, out Bo for that uh, <laughs> camera day. You know, it's just the, the, the list is so long um, that it's, yeah, obviously I guess my name's on it, but um, can't thank those people enough for everything they've done. I've got a question here. It's kind of about, you know, I heard you talking about this earlier. I think John Alderton had asked you that question, this question of how many or, you know, how many were on there. But it, it seems like your boosters have been able to stick with you from the beginning. That's definitely got to be a help with what they're able to help you with and what you're able to go to them with and they're able to come to you with. And it's just kind of basically a two-way street. Well, I think it says a lot about us and our program that every single booster member – on there is still with us from year one uh so six years they all stayed um i don't know if i'm just really good at talking them into staying each year <laughs> or if, if i think they truly enjoy being involved and, and our uh, booster president uh eric burnett has done a great job and and everybody on that boosters uh you know melanie slack eric asanovich uh, emily sign um, Bo Bartley, Don Wright, um, Ms. and they're all people that have had their kids already come former through. Former players, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Miss Cheryl Zittle uh, runs our concession stand. It it takes so many people to have a successful program. It takes so many good people. Uh, we're very fortunate. What were your uh, Aaron Coach Byler? We talked about your previous experience, but what were your guys' previous experiences before taking this job, uh, just around the game and, and coaching as well? On myself, I coached in Marsburg a year, year before Byler, Coach Byler came, and I left that program. But I've been involved in Marsburg Little League for about 20 years, and I knew I knew the kids were coming through Marsburg Little League program, and I knew they'd be f filtering in through Martinsburg High School, and I knew the kids coming and watching them in past seasons of how they performed and stuff like that. It was like no relationship, you know. You build a relationship with the coaches, and they'll play hard for you. Uh, for me, I've pretty much played baseball my whole life, and it's something I've always been passionate about. And, you know, it kind of was uh, – I was I coached the year before Bo for Martinsburg. It just wasn't a good fit. And then I spent a year at Musselman, and I coached baseball there. And uh, it just didn't feel like a fit for me over there, so I ended up coming back to Martinsburg High School and teaching. And so, you know, having that relationship and then being able to coach, and, you know, that's kind of an extension of the classroom. So like Bo said, you know, building of relationships, it was easy for me because I have them in class and then I could have them, you know, after school, baseball, and build that relationship even more. The nice part, you know, Bo is out in the community and involved in Martinsburg Little League, and he has all those connections uh, with those families in the community. And then you have Kurt in the classroom, and he's got that connection uh, with the kids too. So it's just a bunch of different angles uh, for our program. All right, now I'm going to get into the uh, program. It's uh, still early on in the season, but what have you guys learned about this year's team so far? Go for it. I mean, for me, on the pitching side of things, it's definitely uh, more challenging, and it's rewarding, too, because it, you know they're learning how to pitch varsity innings. So a lot more teaching. I feel like last year you, know, you had Joe and Caleb and DJ and Isaiah. All these kids were, you know, this was second nature, and it was a lot of like uh, – we were in cruise control, you know. They're going to throw seven innings, throw complete games. We're going to win games. 
And this year it's a lot more talking, a lot more being methodical and which is rewarding, but it has been a challenge and it's one that is different than last year. Yeah, I mean, every year is different. This team, uh, you guys weren't here, but we jokingly, well, not jokingly, but this team kind of reminds us of the post-COVID team um, where we had, you know, everybody coming back was new, uh, doesn't have a whole lot of varsity experience. Uh, last year's team, like Kurt said, you know, you could, we practiced for two days. And we were like, all right, let's play a game. Like, they were ready to go. And this team, it's like we need a little more practice than we do playing games. But each year is different, um, and that's the joy of – you know that that makes high school baseball really really fun. And uh, I got a question for you. It's c- something I've started to ask coaches here when it's more of a formal interview, not before a game, uh, but with the new passage of the the bill HB uh, what is it two two eighty two House Bill two eight two zero the uh, transfer rule. How do you think that's going to impact the future of sports in high school here, not only in the Panhandle but especially for baseball? Yeah, I don't. I can't answer that question. With you know, I don't. I don't know. Um, obviously, I think it gives kids uh, school school choice, right? Uh, wherever you want to go, you can go. Um, and you know, we're just that doesn't that bill doesn't change what we do. I don't. You know, you go t- go to our locker room and see if any of our kids want to leave. I beg to say the answer is no. Um, okay. So we just try to run the best program we possibly can. If, if a kid wants to come to Martinsburg, base, Martinsburg High School to play baseball, then I guess with that bill, he now has that option. I was going to say, going back to Little League and uh, having Bo be involved in both programs, how do you think that helps to have that connection there? And especially if, if you want to have success at the varsity level, it really does start with your feeder programs and your Little League system. You see Jefferson Little League's usually toward the top, and then – Jefferson baseball has obviously had, you know, a ton of success. So how does that help having a coach that's kind of with both programs? Oh, it's huge. I mean, Bo was involved with Martinsburg Little League for years and years and years, and that's, you know, that's a, that's a thankless job. And, and I'm, you know, thankful to everybody that coaches Little League and is involved in Little League and is on the Little League board and, and all that stuff. So first off, thanks to Bo for doing that for, for 20 years and just being able to have him down there and just connections. It's just all, you know, over six years we've made so many connections and so many, met so many good people that have helped our program. And, and I, and I go to a lot of little league games too, because I think it's really big as a program to, to be there, to have the kids see, uh, you know, to know what's coming in the future. And, you know, it, it's just good to be out there. I think it's, I said this on the air about a couple of years ago with, with Matt and Matt and, just kind of want everybody to be bulldogs, you know. Every, everybody's a bulldog. Uh, we whether you're seven years old or whether you're a senior in high school, we want you. If you're wearing Martinsburg baseball jersey, we want to know that. We want you to know that we support you. I want to now get into kind of the fun side of past five years with you guys together. What are some fun stories, I guess, amongst you guys that you want to share that is airable, obviously. Well. Kurt can Kurt can talk a little bit about. We kind of always talk about how him and I are, you know, opposites, and that's what <laughs> keeps us good. That's true. I mean, uh, that's what everybody always says about us. Uh, we're opposites, and you know, I think that's a good thing with coaching. You know, we can, uh, you know, push each other a little bit and encourage each other, and we're not always going to see eye to eye. But that's what good coaching staffs do. You know, we're. Uh, calling each other up and uh, wanting to compete. And at the end of the day, you know, we want to win games and give the best program we could possibly give our kids. So that's part of it. Um, I ain't got, I mean, I got a lot of good stories. <laughs> I know, we got tons of stories. <laughs> He's got I mean, tons of stories, but are they arable? That, that's oh, why yeah, they're, for sure. they're, they're all arable. I, I think it's just a great group. And, and not only these two guys sitting to my left, but, you know, Coach Cooper and, and Buzzy Jackson and Coach Grissinger at the JV level and Coach Lupus and, the, you know, we've had a couple of other guys in and out. And that's the other thing is besides, I mean, Bo, Kurt, uh, Zeke, Coach Coop, but all been together from day one. Um, so that's that means a lot to me uh, as a program. And, and the other thing that I like is, and these guys will tell you, is when, when those past kids come back in the dugout. I mean, that's – to me, that's what it's all about is when those kids show back up and, you know, they're, you know, shaking hands with the coach. And and that's what it's about, see those kids come back and, and just be, 
you know, thankful for the years that they had and, and hear them tell the kids we have now, enjoy it. Cause it goes really, really fast. You uh, took the question I was going to ask you, the, the, your JV program, obviously bringing Zeke in, having him as your head coach there for the JV level. And uh, how does that kind of, you know, he's, he's a younger guy and he could definitely help relate a little bit. Oh, he does a tremendous job, man. Tremendous. Kids love him. I think we did a segment last year, like, uh, on our Instagram with like who was your favorite coach and I think every single one of them except <laughs> one said I think Kurt got a vote yeah Bo got I a remember vote, that but everybody else was coach Zeke and and he, he's just perfect for that job I mean he's just always teaching uh there's a lot of times where I have to tell him hey man you're 15 minutes after Pratt like you're 15 minutes late getting these kids out of here like they gotta go you know what <laughs> I mean they they just stay and he just work with them all day and night and he just does a tremendous job with that stuff I'm good all right, well, I think that's going to wrap it up with uh, the Martinsburg baseball coaches as Coach Byler reached his 100th win here. We'll get one final question. Uh, a week of baseball this week before you head down and have a tough week down at Myrtle Beach. You'll have Allegheny out of Maryland and then a Hedgesville team Friday and Greenbrier East for a double dip on Saturday. Yeah, it, it doesn't get any easier, but you know, at this point in the season, you want to play good teams. You want to play you know, quality competition, and I think the next two weeks we're going to we're going to find out if we did improve or not. So we're looking forward to the challenge. All right. Thanks for the time, guys. Thank you. Thank you.